So we are on another adventure. We're going to a sheep farm. Okay. okay. We're going to learn all about sheep. Yep. Are they, is it mating <laughs> season? I don't know. But there's babies. That's all that matters. That's, I, I don't really need babies. to see them be born. No, I just want to see babies. Billy and I are down for just about anything. So during our forced three-month vacation from dog shows, when we were invited to come visit a sheep farm, you know we were all about that. Sheep and getting to see working dogs in action? Hello, sign us up. He can sit on the other seat and turn around. Like yeah, this. but he won't, he won't because it's Billy. <laughs> do you, do you, um, are you guys married or just He is so gay. Yep. I still have more Jailbreak Diary episodes to share. We kept ourselves pretty darn busy during those three months. So, until our first virtual Drunken Dog Show episode arrives, be sure to like, comment down below, subscribe, and of course, ring that little bell so you don't miss one episode. When Denise Ray told us all about this amazing sheep farm located in Ocala, Florida, and invited us to spend the afternoon, we packed up and headed that way. Denise does all of the grooming on the working dogs that are living on the farm. And while she is grooming dogs, Nicola Slagle is running the show with Florida native, also known as Florida Cracker, sheep. It's considered on a rare breed basis. Their wool, we shear, collect, mm -hmm. it gets processed mm -hmm. and turn into usable yarn. Okay. And we have plenty of that to show you yeah. in all the different levels. Perfect. Oh, wow. Great. This yeah. is cool. Yeah. We have it. Some are dyed. Some are left natural. Okay. A lot of people who are into organic um, right. clothing, they purchase They'll use it. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. On a different level, they're bred to conformity like the dogs. Okay. You know, we, we have a breed They have a standard. standard. Okay. And there are those that, we you know, we breed for a bigger leg, more loin. Okay. So that's where more of the meat. So okay. they're both um, meat and clothing. <laughs> they have multiple purposes in life. That's so awesome. meat, yeah. clothing, mm -hmm. and also some people, show. Some people show them as well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where does one find a sheep show? Or is it called sheep? We used to have one once a year over at the Ocala Dog Show. Okay. Grounds. Um, people would bring their sheep from all over. And due to some instances of cost on having such a show, it has been greatly decreased. Okay. All right. Both are an amazing wealth of knowledge and provided us an opportunity to experience an entirely different world. The owner of the farm actually used to breed Kerry Blue Terriers many years ago, and Nicola started out as kennel help with the dogs. Several years and sweat equity later, she was promoted to farm manager, and she runs the sheep part of the farm, and of course, the rest is history. She's been working on the farm for almost 19 years now. And unfortunately, I know every sheep in here, so just ask me and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> no, wow. So, Florida native sheep, you ask? Well, here's a little bit of a U.S. history lesson for you. You see, these sheep, along with pigs and cows, came over with Ponce de Leon, and they were left to roam the newly discovered lands here in Florida. Completely uncontained, they were allowed to breed and flourish on their own. That's why they are considered native. Pretty cool, eh? So, we learn that the sheep aren't necessarily named, but are numbered, and they are all separated into groups, and those groups are based on the dog that is assigned to them. Uh -huh. Like, this is Giggles, so Giggles group. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and and it may not be the same group in two weeks. He may have a different group. So okay. So Giggles does is a dog. Yep. Giggles does again, each group have its own dog? Pretty much. Okay. Yes. That's Clyde and Lacey. Then we have Badger and Rosie out there. And they use Great Pyrenees. Not a breed that is generally found here in Florida, but they are the perfect breed for herding and tending to sheep. They get theirs from a breeder in St. Louis. You, <laughs> you get the back, right? I get the back, you get the front. I, get, I always get always. the front. I always get the back. You, you always get the I don't need the front. You know. I just do turn over. Here's a little bit of background before we take off on our golf cart adventure around the farm. Starting at the tender age of eight weeks, the Pyrenees puppies go out into their flocks to get associated with the sheep. They learn from their elders on how etiquette in the field is done, and the adults show them the ropes. So, their good nature around the sheep is actually quite instinctive. Yeah. So they're actually um, more sheep-like than they are dog-like. Oh, yeah. Because yes. oh, they yes. have a job to do. I love exactly. it. Exactly. And so there's not a lot of hands-on. They get their vaccinations as needed. They get heart guard and neck guard every month and it's pretty religious about all that um dr randy from and care comes and takes care of them it's my vet i love him yeah. awesome okay cool and the sheeps themselves yeah 
not necessarily the most confident around humans. Granted, they know that that's where their source of food comes from, but for the most part, there's not a lot of human interaction. So being brought to a field of females with their baby lambs was beyond fascinating. There were pregnant ones and nursing ones, and apparently some had just given birth in the field. Yeah, this is do what it. I do. Do it. Um, hang on, sorry. <laughs> It was so amazing to watch Giggles do his job. Birds of prey scoping out the field for the newborn babies using the afterbirth as their sign. Giggles jumped into action to protect his flock. So totally cool. The dogs are also intricately part of moving the flocks from one field to another. Now, granted, the humans generally start the process with a couple of calls and of course shaking of the corn, but then the dogs follow from right behind, making sure that no one is left behind. We got to watch the process in action, moving our flock of girls and their babies over to another field with giggles in tow. Crazy cool, right? To be able to watch a herd do what a herd does best and of course giggles doing what he does best all from our amazing golf cart view. Throwing down some corn there in the new field keeps the moms occupied, long enough for the babies to check out the new feeding area on their own. Nicola gave me the perfect opportunity to get up close and somewhat personal with the baby lambs and some of their mamas. Another really cool thing? The sheep on this particular farm are extremely special and the owners work with the University of Florida because their rams are parasite resistant and have passed that on to their lambs. Come to find out, parasites are the number one killer of sheep, barber pole worms to be exact. With more than 50% of their lambs turning out to have this resistant gene, they have finally done a breeding of the ewes and rams that are both parasite resistant. The results of those breedings are the lambs that we got to see. Genetic testing is constantly being done on these flocks, and with this one particular cross, they can hopefully someday be used to improve the parasite resistance of all breeds of sheep. This is electric fence. Okay. Do not touch Do not it. touch the fence. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's they start, out too. They yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Billy, do not touch the fence, Billy. Please don't touch the fence. Oh Remember God. when I filmed myself, my own death? Right. We don't need you to film your own death. So they don't have a sheep free for all. The rams are kept in their own separate field. That's Pedro. He was the smallest lamb they had ever seen. And so they thought he might be mixed with the Chihuahua. So they named him Pedro. <laughs> they have selected the least head ramming rams to remain on the farm. And of course, those that carry the parasite resistant gene. I can't say that we were not impressed with their awesome genetics, but also their enormous size of sheep testicles. Seriously, they are truly something to behold. Oh, they are, oh my God, they're huge. Like, oh my God. And as we've already learned, these Florida native sheep are used for their wool. We got to get our hands on some of the crazy cool yarns and products produced from this wool. Very cool. Yes. <laughs> This no. is getting her voice. This is the roving. This is how, and then that's how you get it when it starts. Then I can have it finished, and then it's turned into yeah this. And this is dyed. You do. Do you raise blue sheep? <laughs> well, blue we're sheep? working on it. Okay. Great. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow. So these, these are made from it. Oh wow! It's not itchy. No. Do you crochet or knit? Like no. Denise has a friend who crochets. Okay, <laughs> and then makes that out of it. Wow, that is so cool. Hey, I mean, it's like when they say an animal, where they don't waste any parts or pieces. Right. Same thing. I mean, you're taking this and you are making everything mm -hmm. out of, and it's like, that it is. Was, well, it was a, a third crop from your sheep because you get meat, you get milk, you get wool. Oh, you get wool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Spending the day learning all about these amazing sheep were just part of what made it so cool for Billy and I. Getting to see a great Pyrenees doing what it does best was such a treat. The pure instincts of a working dog, it's a beautiful thing to witness. Doing what it was bred to do with greatness. This is why Billy and I love dogs. So, until our next adventure.
have to have a towel to sit on. Because I'm a princess. You are a princess. And to bring your boots, you don't mind having sheep shit on. Well, I've got, I've, I'm wearing my, my There boots, you go. So we're good. Yeah. I, um, mine, yeah. yeah, that's even better when the sheep shit gets all caught up in the treads right? and everything. It's going to be awesome. To you can um, video that at the end. Right, we're going to yeah, clean my boots. Clean the shoes off so that we can get in your car. <laughs> right.